Hey everyone, so here's a quick introduction to making multiples of objects in Max, and this is a very powerful feature of Max, one that we're going to be using a lot over the rest of the semester. We're going to use a different randomization object than we've seen in the past. We're going to use the JIT.noise as opposed to the JIT.BFG. JIT.noise is a simpler randomizer and will serve our purposes for this tutorial. So we're going to do JIT.noise. Um, it takes the same matrix arguments, three plane matrix, which can be red, green, blue, X, Y, Z, with height depth, very standard to use three planes of information. Uh, float 32 is the data type, 32-bit floating point number. That's what we're using throughout this semester. And we'll just create 10 cells, three random values per cell for a total of 30 random values, and we can visualize this with a jit.p window. And every time I click the button, I get 30 random values, which in this case are visualized as 10 random colors. And if I want to have these represent the color or the position of objects, copies of objects in three-dimensional space. I just need the jit.gl.multiple object. jit.gl.multiple takes an argument, which is how many parameters of our multiplied objects do we want to manipulate. Let's do four. And then we do at gl param, and we specify which parameters and in what order do we want to modify them? So we'll say position, scale, color, and rotate x, y, z. And now we will create a grid shape. And this could be a Plato, this could be a model. that we will create multiples of. So there's our cube, and we can give it a material. When we connect the output of the multiple to the input of the grid shape, now this grid shape is being copied and instanced by this jit.gl.multiple, so that when we connect our random values up to it, this for random position, random scale, random color, we'll skip rotation for the moment, send random values in, I get 10 randomly sized cubes that are also randomly positioned and randomly colored. Every time I click this, I get a different randomized configuration. And of course I could even use different values for position, color, and scale. I could have three randomizers here. Random position, random scale, random color. And now my scale, position, and coloration are all controlled by a different set of random values. If I want something to remain unrandomized, instead of using a jit.noise, I can simply use a jit.matrix and set every value in that matrix to whatever I want, like 0.1. So I take a message box, type in 0.1, send that point one into the matrix, and that will set every cell, every plane of every cell in the matrix to point one. So now we see we have cubes. I can also put a vector in here. So I could say point one, point one, one, and that will give me these bar shapes that are point one, meter wide, 0.1 meter high, and a meter in depth.
And of course, any value can go in here. Point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, give me this type of rectangular solid. So one thing we see here, and this leads us into a very important next step, is that all of our cubes, regardless of the output of the jit.noise, all of our cubes are in the upper right-hand corner of our world. Why is that? There's nothing here, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. They're all in the upper right-hand quadrant. That is because the jit.noise is putting out positive values between 1 and 0. And that's great for color, because color wants values that are between 1 and 0. Uh, in fact, with the exception of lights, all color values must be between, the, between 0 and 1, where red is 1, 0, 0, black is 0, 0, 0, white is 1, 1, 1. There's nothing less than 0 or greater than 1 when we're speaking about color all color values fall within that range. However, all position values do not fall into that range. We have negative x positions over here. We have negative y positions down here. So we need to do some simple math to alter the range so that our objects can be evenly spread out through the space. When we want to do math on everything that's in a matrix, we have a new type of structure called jit.gen. And jit.gen is like a subpatcher in that it has stuff inside of it. You can insert it into the patch cord there, holding down shift. So when we double click a jit.gen, we see what's inside of it. And the standard jit.gen that's made for us is just two inputs that are added together and sent out. This is just a default that happens to be in a jit.gen. And this would allow us to add two matrices together. That's not what we want to do here. What we want to do here is just do a little bit of simple math to take this distribution and move it around the center of our world. There's an object that can help us think about this called jit.3m. Jit.3m reports the minimum, mean, or average, and maximum of all the values in a matrix. So if we put down a couple of floating point number boxes here under the first and third outlets of the jit.3m, and generate some new random values, we'll see that the minimum value in the cell is pretty close to zero, and the maximum value in the cell is pretty close to one. So in order to center these values around the center of our world, we can simply subtract 0.5. That will give us an output where our minimum values are pretty close to negative 0.5 and our maximum values are pretty close to 0.5. And we can see now our arrangement of objects is centered around the middle. Another nice thing that jit.gen allows us to do is it allows us to handle all of our inputs of our jit.gl.multiple in a single object. We can go inside our jit.gen and have not just an out1, but an out2, an out3, and an out4. And those will correspond to our inputs of the jit.gl.multiple. First is position, second is scale, third is color, fourth is rotation. And you're going to want to definitely comment these because when you're working inside your jit.gen, you don't want to have to continually pop back out and refer to your jit.gl.multiple. So just comment them as position, scale, color, 
color. Rotation. So inside the jet.gen we have a slightly different group of objects that allow us to work on every cell in a matrix simultaneously. So to do the equivalent of what we did with the jit.matrix out here, setting all of the scales to a certain value, we can use the vec object, which only works within a jit.gen. And the vec object allows us to specify a vector such as 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, which will mean that all of the scales of our cubes will be the same. With color, we can simply take our input and pass it out to color. We don't want to subtract 0.5 from the color because that will create negative color values which are illegal. So we want to keep our original random values for color, but we want to shift our position values so our objects are distributed around the center. And then for rotation, values between 0 and 1 are not going to produce much rotation because rotation is expressed in degrees, where a full circle is 360 degrees. So here we also need to do a little bit of math. We'll multiply, which is the asterisk, shift 8, and we'll multiply it by 360. That turns our values coming in, which are values between 0 and 1, to values that are between 0 and 360, which will give us a random set of rotations. And this, of course, scales to whatever the size of our matrix is. So instead of 10 objects, we can have 100 objects. And they will all follow the same rules. And matrices are multidimensional, so this is 100 objects. This is also 100 objects, ten, a 10 by 10 matrix. So you see here the objects are all clustered together. And again, that's because in our jit.gen, we have specified that we're just shifting around the center, but we're not spreading these objects out at all. So the leftmost object is at negative 0.5 meters from the center. The rightmost object is 0.5 meters from the center. If we want to spread them out, that's just like rotation. It's multiplication again, right? These currently only are spread out across a one meter area. If we want them to be spread out across a two meter area, we'll simply multiply by two. And now we can see our cubes are further spread out. And if we want to continue to spread them out, now we can multiply by four and spread them out over a much larger four meter area. And our jit.gen can have multiple inputs as well, so that if we did want our color to be controlled by a separate randomizer, we could create a new inlet, a new jit.noise, and now we have different random values controlling color and position. And if we have a different dimensionality, now there's only 10 different colors among these 100 objects. This is easier to see if we take it all the way down to, like, for instance, 2. We have 100 objects, but only 2 colors. Or 100 objects, but only 3 colors. So that's just a quick introduction to how we're going to create multiples. And now we'll switch back to using the JIT.BFG in the next tutorial and look at much more sophisticated things that we can do with this.